Hello students, welcome to Mr. Study and welcome to my class. Today I am going to discuss the few formulas related to thermodynamics and thermochemistry. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Now, starting from this side, we know delta H is equal to delta U plus delta NG RT. NG is equal to number of moles of gaseous product minus number of moles of gaseous reactant. Now, next one is heat capacity heat capacity will be equal to that is dq upon dt yes sir now at constant volume if the volume is constant at constant volume that is dq will be equal to de okay and at constant pressure, what I am telling at constant pressure that is dq is be, will be equal to dh or del h. So, if anyone asks you heat capacity at constant volume Cv is equal to dE upon dt at constant volume and Cp that heat capacity at constant pressure that is dh upon dt del h upon del t at constant pressure. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, as we all know, Cp minus Cv is equal to R. R is gas constant. Now, we can say Cp is equal to R plus Cv. Yes, sir. Yes, definitely, definitely. Now, Cp upon Cv is equal to gamma. This is called atomicity of a gas for monoatomic gas for monoatomic gas we know for monoatomic gas cp upon cv equal to gamma is equal to value 1.66 because cp is equal to th uh, here cv is equal to th uh, we get the value of cp and cv from degree of freedom i have discussed i have discussed this thing in detail in my regular lecture 3 by 2 r so cp is equal to 3 by 2 r plus r that is equal to 5 by 2 r and we know now cp upon cv that is 5 by 2 r upon 3 by 2 r that will be equal to look at this one this one cancel we are getting 5 by 3 5 by 3 is equal to 1.66 did you get it yes for monoatomic gas cp upon cv is equal to gamma uh, now uh, for diatomic gas for diatomic gas for diatomic gas what we are getting that is cp upon cv is equal to gamma that is equal to 1.40 clear because uh, in this case cp is equal to uh, cv is equal to 5 by 2 r and cp will be equal to 5 by 2 r plus r that which will be equal to 7 by 2 r am i right in this case yes sir you are absolutely right now cp upon cv will be equal to 7 by 2 r divided by 5 by 2 r clear yes 2 2 2 2 cancel 7 by 5 that is 1.40 this is the case of diatomic gas next we have next we have for polyatomic gas for polyatomic gas what we are getting here yes for polyatomic gas cv CP, uh, cv is equal to 3r and cp is equal to 5r and cp upon cv is equal to gamma that is equal to 3 by 5 that will be equal to cp sorry 5 by 3 uh, 1.33 yes value will be equal to 1.33 so, uh, by using this we can find the atomicity of a gas and I am giving you 5 minutes to note it down. So, I think you have got this that is Cp upon Cv by using this you can find the various number of questions. Now, if anyone asks you suppose there are two non-reacting gas having number of moles N1 and N2 is it clear to you now they are asking uh, what is the value of cv cv of the mixture mixture of two non reacting gases that will be equal to n1 cv1 plus plus n2 c pardon plus n2 cv2 upon 
n1 plus n2 this is the case of cv of the mixture cv of the mixture wait for a moment we have that is cv of the mixture cv put here cv cv n1 cv1 plus n2 cv2 upon n1 plus n2 okay now we have the next one is first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics what is the first law of thermodynamics okay according to this law we know energy can neither be created nor be de uh, disturbed what is the mathematical expression delta u is equal to q plus w do you know this if heat is given to the system and work is done on the system but if heat is given to the system and work is done by the system then that will be equal to delta u is equal to q minus w this is a general statement mathematical expression of first law of thermodynamic now the cases for a cyclic process and for isothermal process if we can consider cyclic process and isothermal process in isothermal in isothermal or and cyclic process what we observe the value of delta u is equal to 0 generally so what we get q is equal to minus w that is if q is positive then w will be negative if w is negative q will be positive clear to you yes sir now for adiabatic process we know in for adiabatic process q is equal to 0 so we will get delta u is equal to w q is equal to 0 we get delta u is equal to w clear yes now how to find the work done in isothermal and adiabatic process these are the things yes in case of work done work done in work done in isothermal reversible expansion okay we get w is equal to minus 2.303 nrt log v2 during my regular lecture i have given complete derivation and w is equal to minus 2.303 nrt log p1 upon p2 clear to you w is equal to minus 2.303 nrt log v2 upon v1 w is equal to minus 2.303 nrt log p1 upon p2 because as per the voice law we know p1 upon p2 is equal to v2 upon v1 now this is the case of expansion again i am repeating this is the case of expansion but if there is a compression then it will be equal to 2.303 nrt log v1 upon v2 or 2.303 nrt log p2 upon p1 this is the case of work done in isothermal reversible expansion and this is the work done in isothermal reversible compression now if there is a um, isothermal irreversible process now we have the simple process formula minus p external delta v clear yes sir now in case of adiabatic process in case of adiabatic process work done work done for adiabatic process we know work done for adiabatic process w is equal to cv dt or you can say cv delta t clear yes w is equal to next r upon gamma minus 1 t2 delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 for n moles that will be equal to w is equal to n r gamma minus 1 t2 minus t1 that is the work done for adiabatic process another derivation in physics we have studied this thing that is pv equal gamma is equal to constant in case of adiabatic relations p and v relation p1 v1 gamma is equal to p2 v2 gamma what is gamma gamma is atomicity of the gas yes sir the next relation what we have t2 upon t1 is equal to v1 upon v2 to the power gamma minus 1 clear or we can write t2 upon t1 is equal to p2 upon p1 gamma minus 1 or v1 upon v2 gamma minus 1 these are the relations you can also write t1 upon t2 clear yes now we have the next thing uh, we have discussed the work done yeah 
we know area under the curve gives you work done. If I draw the graph between P and V and we, if you want to show all the process, this is isobaric process, this is isothermal, this is iso, uh, pardon, this is uh, isobaric, isochoric volume constant, isothermal and this one is adiabatic. In a graph, we can show all the process. This is isobaric process, this is isochoric process, this is isothermal process and this is adiabatic process, area under the curve. So, if anyone asks you how to find the work done if area given, so area under the curve gives you the work done. Again, I am repeating, suppose we have P and V graph and graph is like this. So, area under the curve, area under the curve gives you the work done. Now, suppose we have this much, there is a question from competitive examination again. Now, if there is a clockwise, then in this case work done is taken, we will come negative. If anti-clockwise movement, anti-clockwise then work done come positive. Clear to you? Again, I am repeating area under the curve gives you the work done. Clear? Yes, sir. Now, the next one is thermochemistry. We know in thermochemistry, we discuss the heat change during a reaction. And suppose uh, heat of, uh, suppose A plus B gives you C and in this case delta H comes negative or delta U comes negative. So, the process is called exothermic process. Now, A plus B, now adding heat, heat, heat is, heat, heat releases that is exothermic, it is given to the system that is delta H is positive or delta U is positive, then it is known as uh, endothermic process. Now, in any reaction, in any changes, heat of reaction, delta H um, will be heat of any reaction delta H we know that is summation of heat of formation of product minus summation of heat of uh, formation of reactant. Clear? Now, in case of bond energy, we know summation of bond energies of reactant minus summation of bond energies of product. If you have this much knowledge, you can solve each and every question related to thermochemistry. Now, there are many, many type of reaction, uh, 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 re, uh, reaction in which heat change take place like heat of neutralization, heat of formation, heat of combustion, heat of solution, heat of allotropic changes, physical changes are also there. So, if I apply this formula, that is form product minus reactant, you can get heat of reaction in each and every cases. Clear to you? Now, uh, the next uh, one is Hess law. Hess law. What is Hess law? We know if a reaction proceed in one step or in uh, or more than one step, the total energy take place, the total energy ch uh, changes always you may say. Suppose a, a gives B in one step and in this case, suppose delta H comes X and now first A gives B and B gives, fine, uh, sorry, A gives C, then C finally gives B. That is, the reaction proceed in two step. For first step, delta H1, let assume X1 and delta H2, let us assume X2. So, as per the Hess law, that is delta H will be equal to delta H1 plus delta H2. That is, X is equal to X1 plus X2. This is the case. This is a statement, general statement of Hess law. For example, if I take here C plus half O2, it first gives CO then CO plus half O2, it gives CO2. We have the final product CO2. In this case, the uh, reaction proceed in two steps. Suppose delta H1 is equal to X and delta H2 is equal to Y. So, overall delta H is equal to X plus Y. Yes. Now, the reaction proceed in only one step. C plus O2, it gives you CO2. Now, in this case, delta H. Delta H exactly will be equal to delta H1 plus delta H2. Am I right? Yes, sir. This is the statement of Hess law. And by using this Hess law, bond haber cycle, we can easily find the lattice energy. And bond haber cycle, bond haber cycle, by this matter, you can easily find the lattice energy of the system. Do you have any idea? Yes, sir, we do. 
So these are the few things which will help you a lot during problem solving. And I hope so. Now my friend, time has come. Time to say bye bye. Thank you so much.